Now, I'll ask most children what their biggest worry is, and, uh, and often the answer may well seem trivial to adult ears. But for a minority of Britain's children, the answers will be shocking and saddening. There are thought to be at least a thousand child prostitutes regularly working in Britain. This summer, the first ever World Conference on the Sexual Exploitation of Children will take place in Stockholm. Sexual abuse in third world countries will be high on the agenda, but delegates will also discuss the situation in Britain, where each year hundreds of children are cautioned or prosecuted for soliciting. Reformers are calling for a change in the law here so that those who use child prostitutes face legal proceedings rather than the children themselves. In a few moments, I'll be talking to Alan Levy QC, an expert in child law, and Rachel O'Brien from the Children's Society. But first, our correspondent Sue Lloyd Roberts has this special report. King's Cross is probably the most notorious red light district in Britain, responsible for ruining the reputation of at least one distinguished government servant and the scenes of dozens of police cleanups. If the scene tonight is anything to go by, largely unsuccessful. To the outsider, the girls look young, although most greet the camera with hostility and don't wait to have their ages asked. According to those on the fringes of this world, the hotel doormen and taxi drivers, the punters are demanding them ever younger. Of an evening, especially for night drivers, is part of the job. But you do get the occasion when you get the people in the back of the cab, certain men that get in the back of the cab that want young ladies at about 12, 13 years of age and younger. <clears throat> and being a father of a little girl, um, I can assure you, I don't take that very kindly. And. Uh, I try and get them out of the cab as quickly as I possibly can, but I can assure you, if I weren't a cab driver, I'd get them out of the cab and I'd, I'd definitely finish them off. I know that for a fact. The law in this country would appear to be contradictory. While the recent Children's Act says that all children under the age of 18 should be protected from sexual abuse, the Street Offences Act allows all women, even those under the age of 16, the age of consent, to be prosecuted and fined for soliciting and hundreds are. Most of these kids will say that they got involved by accident and regret it. Some tell you it was to buy food, others clothes, CDs and drugs. Some may take drugs to numb the pain and then, in a self-destructive cycle, continue with prostitution to buy the drugs which have become addictive. To safeguard their anonymity, we've asked other children to speak the words of these two 14-year-olds. Well, an older friend got me started. I was 13 and I needed money for clothes and drugs. I can earn about 60 pounds a night usually from three people in their cars. Each job lasts about 20 minutes. Most of the time they ask me how old I am. I do go to school though, and I always do my homework, after my work that is. I'd like to get a Saturday job and stop what I'm doing. Even those who admit they got involved voluntarily call themselves victims. I think it's disgusting what I do, and I call them paedophiles because they want underage sex. They often ask me to get even younger girls for them. There are girls from 12 to 15 working round here. Yeah, I would call myself a victim of child abuse. With the boys, the law is different. Under a separate act, they can face imprisonment. There are hundreds of rent boys working in Britain for often tragic reasons, according to the therapist of this London Help Centre. Often young people that we're working with have come through the care system. Now, the care system is supposed to be about being a care system, but often they'll talk about the neglect that they've experienced there and the abuse that's often gone on within the children's homes and the fact that there's been no one there for them, you know, be it a parent. So that they will go looking for that somewhere else and unfortunately they'll actually go to the streets, many of them, and run away and go looking for that you know, from people who want to buy sex from them. And that's a price that they'll pay to get some of the support, maybe some of the love and some of the attention that they've missed out on in life. Nearly all the rent boys I met at this centre told me stories that followed a pattern of abuse at an early age, often while in residential care, which led them to prostitution. I uh, ran away from care when I was 15. Um, ended up on the streets because I was getting harassment and racism from my, my children's home. Um, so I, I just ran, ended up in Piccadilly where I met somebody uh, there who said, like, you know, I can help you get money. And so I did my very first panto when I was 15. Um, and I, I, what I remember of it was it was just absolutely really horrible. I, was cry, I cried all the way through it. And then, like, after that, you know, you have a drink and stuff and 
you start taking drugs mm. and you can do it and then the pain goes away afterwards. The first time I was eight and my mum left me in a public toilet just for a little while, it wasn't very long and um, there was a guy in the toilet next door and he came in and done whatever sort of thing and I got paid £3.60 and then the guy went to prison for four years for abusing some other young guy and he came out when I was 12 and then when he came out it just happened, started happening again. Do you think the law should be changed to stop prosecuting young people and prosecute the punter more? I think the punter should be prosecuted. Um, I don't know which came first, the punter or the rent boy. I haven't got a clue about that, but I think punters should be done because the punters are looking for the sex. We're just giving it to them. Most children are cautioned and convicted for prostitution in Britain's major cities. But according to the national expert on the subject, it would be a mistake to say that the problem is here alone. No, it's not just the big cities. Um, I think we're seeing an increase in what I call Middle England, the market towns, the larger towns and the cathedral cities. And I think this is going to continue to increase in the next few years. And that's uh, not only me saying that, that's several of the most um, eminent of the children's charities who are, who are saying this. When we tried to investigate this claim, only one police force out of a dozen or so we contacted was prepared to cooperate. Out on patrol, the South Yorkshire police told us there are only two or three underage girls working the streets here in Doncaster, but I met three in one afternoon, and the girls themselves say there are at least a dozen. Two young prostitutes were murdered here last year, and the police patrol the vice area with care. Keep walking, um. The police say they prefer to get to know the girls and caution them rather than prosecute, and they don't like the call for a change in the law. There have been calls to decriminalise juvenile prostitution, but in my opinion uh, that is totally unworkable, and it will simply encourage girls to go on the street without fear of any action being taken against them. I simply don't think that the people who advocate that course have thought it through properly. But those who work with Britain's street children disagree. The children don't need to be punished. It's effectively it's the adults who use children and who perpetuate the abuse. Most adults who use children are fully aware that they are underage. Most adults who use children, are, in my view, are paedophiles and should effectively be used, uh, be targeted accordingly by society. When you've got um, men coming down to the red light area and asking specifically for girls as young as 12 and 13, then there's a market for it and if they can't get it, then somebody will go and find it for them. The debate over where the blame lies will continue, whether with the punters themselves or with the kids, because of poverty, family breakdown or perhaps lack of moral fibre. But it all leads to a dead end that hundreds of children wish they'd never reached. I blame myself because I was foolish enough to listen to my friend. I wish I could turn the clock back, but I don't think there's a chance. If I found a kid in the street today, I'd give her advice and tell her to go home and not come back. So does the law need to be changed in order to protect these children from abuse? Rachel O'Brien is from the Children's Society and Alan Levy QC is an expert in child law. Good morning to both of you. Yeah. Rachel, let's just talk a bit about the problem itself before we talk about the, the sort of legal specifics. Um, we know, as we mentioned, this kind of thing happens in third world countries, but I'm sure there are going to be millions of people watching this who just can't believe that it, it really is happening on our own doorstep. How widespread is the problem? One of the problems is that we don't, we don't actually know exactly what the figures. What we do know that, for example, over six years there's been 2,000 um, children cautioned under 18, and that's just young women. So it is clearly a, a widespread problem, and it isn't just in major cities. And like children in other countries, it's often a survival technique. So these are children that are out on the street without money. Is it generally believed to be on the increase, as we heard in that report? We don't know if it's on the increase. Certainly we're seeing the cautions of convictions of the 14 to 16 year olds increasing, which either indicates that the police are taking a different approach or that there are more young people out there. 
with our work on the streets with young people, we're seeing more young people out. What sort of young people turn to prostitution? Is there any one type, as it were? These children are as different as any of our children, but what, what is common is that a lot of them have spent time in residential care, a lot of them will have um, suffered abuse and neglect previous to that. Um, they will be very vulnerable and they are open to this kind of exploitation. Okay, the Children's Society wants um, prostitution for those under 18 to be decriminalised. Why is that? I think that's just one of the things we've asked for and that's clearly the most controversial, but we see the law as it stands as a barrier to actually helping young people. It pushes them further away from people, including the police, who really are trying to do something often. Um, for example, if you are actually trying to get information for young people on paedophiles in the area, they are not going to cooperate if they are seen to be a criminal themselves. There are those, though, who believe that if you decriminalise it, um, it's going to encourage more children onto the streets. There's got to be some sort of punishment there. I think it's, it's not a career option. These are young people who are facing incredibly tough choices. Often they are involved in other street cultures, such as drugs. It's not something that they choose to do in the sense that it's, it's, it's an easy choice. I think what we should be asking is, how do we help get young people off the street? And the Children's Society view is that criminalisation doesn't actually work. And how about those who abuse the children? There is, the, there is a legal framework there for, for tackling offenders. I think what would be interesting is if you actually start accepting this issue as one of child abuse and exploitation, what messages that sends out to the men, including pimps, landlords for example, that this isn't just pimping, this is child prostitution, this is abuse. Alan Levy QC, should this law be changed? Well, I think eventually, yes. Um, I th wants to look at it in two parts. I think as far as the so-called punters, as they're described, are concerned, I think we need stronger laws and more comprehensive laws. But I think as far as the children and young people who are involved, I agree with Rachel that the aim should be decriminalisation, although I suspect, and it may be the cautious lawyer in me, that we have to go by stages. I think there may have to be a criminal law in the hope that it will deter a few, and if only a few are kept off the streets, I think that's a good aim. Um, but I think we have to get there gradually, and we have to bring um, the police and the social services and the other people um, with the reform so that everybody is united in working to help the children. Well, yes, because this is where the current contradictions stand, really, isn't it? The 1989 Children Act says that children under 18 must be protected. It's the duty of the police and social services to protect these children. Yet, at the same time, they're being prosecuted yeah. for, for prostitution. Um, do you think the police are doing enough to protect these children? To, to live up to the 1989 Children Act? Well, it's difficult to um, speak in general terms because I, I don't know what the position is in various parts of the country, but I think there's a very real uh, suspicion that in parts of the country the various agencies are not doing enough. Um, so in that sense, I think there's room for considerable improvement. Now, um, we asked uh, the government minister to appear on the programme, but, uh, but they refused. The Home Office did give us a statement, however. Um, it says the government isn't persuaded it would be right to provide that nobody under the age of 18 could be cautioned, charged or convicted for their involvement in prostitution. Uh, there's no case for decriminalising any offence. Would you presumably disagree with that? Yes, I do, and I think, unfortunately, this is yet another area where there's an inherent contradiction in government policy, that they produce good, progressive laws in the civil sphere, for instance, the Children Act, but then fall way behind in the Criminal Act, and nobody looks at it, looks at the framework overall, so that there's a tension and an inconsistency, and this isn't, isn't the only area in which this is happening. And somebody at a very high level really needs to get a grip of this, because the situation, as you've described, and Rachel has described, and the film described, and particularly the cabbie, perhaps speaks for many of us, although violence isn't the answer, it really is a very scandalous situation in our uh, society. Alan Levy QC and Rachel O'Brien, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank, thank you. you. Now, a quick reminder on how you can contact us here on Breakfast News Extra to have your say on any issue in the news. You can call us on 0181 811 1000 or fax us on 0181 811 1010. We'd love to hear from you. And I got paid £3.60. And then the guy went to prison for four years for abusing some other young guy. 
and he came out when I was 12. And then when he came out, it just happened, started happening again. Do you think the law should be changed to stop prosecuting young people and prosecute the punter law? I think the punter should be prosecuted. Um, I don't know which came first, the punter or the rent boy. I haven't got a clue about that, but I think punters should be done because the punters are looking for the sex. We're just giving it to them. Most children are cautioned and convicted for prostitution in Britain's major cities. But according to the national expert on the subject, it would be a mistake to say that the problem is here alone. No, it's not just the big cities. Um, I think we're seeing an increase in what I call Middle England, the market towns, the larger towns, and the cathedral cities. And I think this is going to continue to increase in the next few years. And that's uh, not only me saying that, that's several of the most um, eminent of the children's charities who are, who are saying this. When we try to investigate this claim, only one police force... ...for them, you know, be it a parent, so that they will go looking for that somewhere else. And unfortunately, they'll actually go to the streets, many of them, and run away and go looking for that, you know, from people who want to buy sex from them. And that's the price that they'll pay to get some of the support, maybe some of the love and some of the attention that they've missed out on in life. Nearly all the rent boys I met at this centre told me stories that followed a pattern of abuse at an early age, often while in residential care, which led them to prostitution. I uh, ran away from care when I was 15, um, ended up on the streets because I was getting harassment and racism from my, my children's home. Um, so I, I just ran, ended up in Piccadilly where I met somebody uh, there who said, like, you know, I can help you get money. And so I did my very first panto when I was 15. Um, and uh, what I remember of it was it was just absolutely really horrible. I would cry, I cried all the way through it. And then, like, after that, you know, you have a drink and stuff and you start taking drugs and you can do it and then the pain goes away afterwards. The first time I was eight and my mum left me in a public toilet just for a little while, it wasn't very long, and um, there was a guy in the toilet next door and he came in and done whatever. So of this world, the hotel doorman and taxi drivers, the punters are demanding them ever younger. Of an evening, especially for night drivers, is part of the job. But you do get the occasion when you get the people in the back of the cab, certain men that get in the back of the cab that want young ladies at about 12, 13 years of age and younger. <clears throat> and being a father of a little girl, um, I can assure you, I don't take that very kindly. And uh, I try and get them out of the cab as quickly as I possibly can. But I can assure you, if I weren't a cab driver, I'd get them out of the cab and I, I, I'd definitely finish them off. I know that for a fact. The law in this country would appear to be contradictory, while the recent Children's Act says that all children under the age of 18 should be protected from sexual abuse. The Street Offences Act allows all women, even those under the age of 16, the age of consent, to be prosecuted and fined for soliciting, and hundreds are. Most of these kids will say that they got involved by accident and regret it. Some tell you it was to buy food, others clothes, CDs and drugs. Some may take drugs to numb the pain and then, in a self-destructive cycle, continue with prostitution to buy the drugs which have become addictive. To safeguard their anonymity, we've asked other children to speak the words of these two 14-year-olds. Well, an older friend got me started. I was 13 and I needed money for clothes and drugs. I can earn about 60 pounds a night usually from three people in their cars. Each job lasts about 20 minutes. Most of the time they ask me how old I am. I do go to school though, and I always do my homework, after my work that is. I'd like to get a Saturday job and stop what I'm doing. Even those who admit they got involved voluntarily call themselves victims. I think it's disgusting what I do, and I call them paedophiles because they want underage sex. They often ask me to get even younger girls for them. There are girls from 12 to 15 working round here. Yeah. I would call myself a victim of child abuse. With the boys, the law is different. Under a separate act, they can face imprisonment. There are hundreds of rent boys working in Britain for often tragic reasons, according to the therapist of this London Help Centre.
often young people that we're working with have come through the care system. Now, the care system is supposed to be about being a care system, but often they'll talk about the neglect that they've experienced there and the abuse that's often gone on within the children's homes and the fact that there's been no one there. Now, ask most children what their biggest worry is and, uh, and often the answer may well seem trivial to adult ears. But for a minority of Britain's children, the answers will be shocking and saddening. There are thought to be at least a thousand child prostitutes regularly working in Britain. This summer, the first ever World Conference on the Sexual Exploitation of Children will take place in Stockholm. Sexual abuse in third world countries will be high on the agenda, but delegates will also discuss the situation in Britain, where each year hundreds of children are cautioned or prosecuted for soliciting. Reformers are calling for a change in the law here so that those who use child prostitutes face legal proceedings rather than the children themselves. In a few moments, I'll be talking to Alan Levy QC, an expert in child law, and Rachel O'Brien from the Children's Society. But first, our correspondent Sue Lloyd Roberts has this special report. King's Cross is probably the most notorious red light district in Britain, responsible for ruining the reputation of at least one distinguished government servant and the scenes of dozens of police cleanups. If the scene tonight is anything to go by, largely unsuccessful. To the outsider, the girls look young, although most greet the camera with hostility and don't wait to have their ages asked. According to those on the fringes